What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am here to bring you to the first episode of my Napoleon Hunter War 3 campaign as Sweden. Ordinarily I do this intro um, in the main menu screen but the music is so loud you have to do a lot of fiddling between menus. So we're going to do world domination and I've set campaign difficulty to normal and battle difficulty to hard according to the mods description pages on the Total War Center. Uh, that is the recommended difficulty level. I'm I'm happy to stick with it because it's my I don't really have that much exposure to, to Napoleon Total War Three. Um, but as you can see, the uh, Swedish faction is the one that has succeeded in the faction vote. So the advice from the narrator was to both push back the Russians on the Baltic coast and also to expand our borders here. Um, so what I'm probably going to want to do is give myself better roads because they're very cheap only 94 gold a pop i'm going to want to build this logging camp because that's minus 12 percent cost to the uh, to of construction constructing buildings which is pretty handy and we're going to get our agent over into the school so at Gothenburg. So we're going to be focusing on the economic side first because we ain't making much cash and it's not going to get better once we start recruiting troops. So national debt will be good because it helps drive down upkeep costs and increases town wealth per turn. So the sooner we get that, the better. We're also going to want to upgrade our port, the Mercantile Trading Company, chiefly because... Right now our commercial port has two trade routes. We want to expand that to three. Hopefully try and get some trade with the Ottoman Empire. And let's get our um, Indiamen trade ships out to some of the trade zones. So let's just try to get one from one set of furs and one set of um, yeah, it's to back cotton. Cotton and furs. That's what we're going for. So we are going to want to fight... Denmark. So where... Oh, one thing we do need to do, because we also, for whatever reason, have an army forward placed here in Mecklenburg. So we want to bring them back into the fold. And they probably need to be joined firstly by this force. And I'm probably going to want to send a ship to take the garrison of uh, Finland away because as much as I want to defend it against Russia if they come for it I can't stop it and my main I'm probably better served securing Copenhagen in Finland and then maybe swinging back east rather than trying to hold on to Finland and dealing with Denmark at the same time so once all these troops are in are in are in um I've gathered near Malmo that should be quite good we want to march straight on the capital Stockholm itself, you can do lots of upgrades, but I'm reluctant to do too much spending. Although I do like the Grand Opera House for only 2,000 to get a plus one happiness and an extra four per turn to town wealth. I like that. So in terms of recruitment, every single unit is unit capped. And that's a, that was a surprise for me. There is a limited number of everything you can recruit. And I guess that makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, but... It's to try and cut down on the number of elite stacks people make. Granted, it does make things like militia that much more useful. I'm about to record a, a load of them. We want to take Copenhagen fairly quickly and get ready to bring the fight against uh, Christiana to the north. So in terms of diplomacy, we're at war with Württemberg, we're at war with the Kingdom of Italy, we're at war with um, Bayern. The Kingdom of Bayern, the Bayern, we're at war with France, as is tradition, and we've got some uh, some good alliances and trade agreements with some quite major countries. So we're trading with Britain, Austria, and Prussia. So we're not actually bringing in. We have trade agreements with Austria, but we're not actually bringing in bringing in any cash because we don't have. We can't bring in any more ships to our ports. I would assume. So let's check out our ministers. Plus one navy patron. That's quite good off the bat. You're not very this. So my the head of my government is a patron of the navy. My navy guy has nothing going for him. So immediately he's going to be booted out. 
Actually, that's something that's worth checking out first. We're an absolute monarchy, so we do what we like. So in terms of ministers... Treasury minister... Plus one no happiness to nobility, plus one management to... For the treasury, which is good. Plus one management, minus one clamour for reform. Yeah, that's pretty good. Minus one happiness, lower classes. Okay, we don't really need you. Because we're an absolute monarchy. We don't really want to have the lower classes be unhappy anyway. Any standouts here? Plus one treasury, plus one navy. But I like my navy guy and I like my treasury guy. You've got nothing. You've got nothing. This guy. Plus one management, plus one happiness, lower classes. So I immediately want to... I feel like I want to swap out this chap. All he does is stir people up. What about the last guy? Morally impaired. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking for someone to take... Um, to be our Lord Chief Minister. But I will take Mr. Hilden and his happiness... Happiness traits and his management traits to be at head of our army, because that will reduce recruitment cost and reduces upkeep, which is really important. So, so we're currently at a thousand, and I probably can't really tweak that too much. Not at this stage. Although I could. Ooh, tax burden's about to go up a lot. Maybe drop it right down for lower classes. So how's that impacted our tax? Yeah, quite significantly, but at the very least it's... Keeps our growth up high, although to be honest, I can't, don't really see how many opportunities we've got for growth here as it is. Maybe I'll keep it. Keep it balanced. I'll give them a bit of a break. Um, actually, I might even notch the upper classes up a bit because... I mean, they're being taxed, but we're an absolute monarchy, so they're already quite heavily in our favour as it is. That might start to change as the various things happen, but I think that's a good way to start. Let's hit end turn. Oh, that's going to be... Okay, join the war against the Swiss Confederation and the Kingdom of Spain. No. I do not want to be at war with Spain. And you've offered the same thing, just less money. No, Britain. We need to play this carefully. Now that's a deal I could get behind. Join war against a landlocked country that's probably going to die anyway. For 1,300. Alright then. That's a good deal. That's some good seed money. Uh oh. That's some good seed money for a... Uh, an upgraded... Inf uh, in upgraded road network. I think. So with our ships here... We will have quite a significant... Um... Well, we, we will be able to cross over and attack Copenhagen fairly well. I think they are building up their strength in Norway. So that's kind of why I want the militia here as well. I need to bulk out my armies. Yeah, I'm not going to spend any money in Finland. Yeah, see, they're a bit... Hmm, they don't like that. They didn't like that decision. I'll have to get used to it. So we created four militia in Sweden and we built basic roads. So let's upgrade to cobbled roads in Sweden. Can't do anything else with that except upgrade the school. We've got the happiness to get we can get away with it from an unhappiness perspective. But I don't think we need it right off the bat. Because we're only researching early technologies anyway. And my little ships are, are on their way. Could probably do with actually rebuilding some extra merchantmen to try and secure the 
Trade zones. I am counting on the protection of the Royal Navy, protecting the ships of his Swedish Majesty. I'm just hoping. So right now, I think we are allied with Russia. I'm just waiting for... Uh, I'm hoping that they, that sticks for as long as possible. If these units can combine, this infantry that's being recruited can march to block any troops that come from Norway. So you can try and recruit two Indiamen. So I really do want... So I actually don't want to double check. Cotton is 28. Tobacco is 19. Tobacco is 19. And furs are 21. So ideally... Really, I think I probably just want to dump two on... Well, I want to secure as many as possible, really. As soon as you've secured as many as you can, then you can dial up the amount of ships on any trade zone. You know, I mean, I've immediately done what I said I was going, what I wasn't going to do, and spend a load of money upgrading buildings before the lumber mills finished. I mean, that's just a flat wealth bonus, but I don't really want to face off against the Russian navy. Just bring them back into the fold. We're going to have to be very careful, very careful indeed, how we manage this campaign. To be honest, with those unit caps, I don't know, it might not even be possible to build armies, or build enough armies to conquer the world. We'll have to see. Yeah, I'm I'm a bit cagey, because I haven't, <laughs> haven't ever really played a lot of Napoleon Total War 3. So they got a full garrison, or nearly full garrison. Got some gaps. Manor. Oh, I can't. Order. Okay, that's going to give them time to build up their strength. Okay, good. We can actually lose one of the militia units. Because you've got three spaces here. Add in th these three units to his force. The line infantry, well, set Gothenburg as the place to go to. 2300, and again, we can't do anything. You don't even have the strength to march over and block it and, and um, lay siege to the town. But let's first check, actually. Yeah, they're allied with Mecklenburg, which is unfortunate. Because they could go to war with us. But let's hit end turn. Yep. Oh, there's one trade zone that's occupied. Oh, I've got a feeling that guy had his movement cancelled from crashing into the back of the other ship. Keep moving, Russia. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. The gentleman in Sweden. Handy. Two more turns to classical economics. Excellent. So you've secured the cotton supplies. And our, oh, our income's gone down a lot because we've recruited more stuff. So let's guess that one's... Send one of them to the last trade zone. Well, the suspected last trade zone. Send another one over to the cotton side, to the cotton M trade zone. I don't want to go too far south because we are at war with France. Although, one wonders. Peace. Oh. So these men can march, join the force there. You men. Maintain your advance towards the college. Last unit of line infantry joined them. New men cross the strait. Don't call my allies in because I don't want to risk them saying no. 
Mecklenburg did join them. That's a bit of a bummer, but actually that's a lot of militia. I mean, we've got a lot of militia. First of all, I want to see if I can try and... Peace. Damn. Okay, let's try. So apparently what is good in this is to... What does work, because presenting state gift is quite cheap now. So let's give them a state gift of China. Apparently there is scope to actually, um, to really like create long-term lasting relationships. So I might actually give 500 gold to the Ottomans to slowly start to build up their trust and favour to me. So when Russia starts to kick off, I mean, everyone's all allied with allied against France for now. But let's take Hans Henrik von Essen and attack the Danish, and this could go horribly wrong. But I think I'm just going to be play it cool, use your cavalry well, and it should be okay. So let's attack the city. Let's attack the city of Copenhagen. This is my first battle in. Napoleon Total War 3 in a hideously long time. Hideously long time, and. Well, it shouldn't go horribly wrong. But then again, <laughs> how many disasters in history say things shouldn't go horribly wrong? During the deployment phase, you can secretly arrange your units inside the deployment zone uh, before battle commences. So, my guy is. My guy's clearly the weakling. I don't like this. Click middle mouse button, it drags it, and, and I want... Hmm. So I've got a, th a um, six pounder. Deploy the guns. We don't get range rings in this. So let's create... Central formation with my line infantry. You have a 12 pounder who is probably just going to deploy over on this flank as well. Interesting, 12 pounders only get two. So on this right flank, we've got two infantry units plus a grenadier unit. And this is going to be my... Oh, my militia get defences. This is going to be my flank that pushes around and engulfs. So let's put... So these are light infantry. I will do... I will look along the... The units when we've deployed. So Dragoons, Jäger de Haas, Scout Squadron... Just combine them together, then put some more cavalry on the other flank. General in the centre, the last unit of light infantry is going to push the flank, so... Actually, it might be better off once the battle's been joined, actually, because then I've got my traditional movement, my controls, back. Pressing the space oh, I don't even have that. On your keyboard after orders have been issued displays the position of your units... So they are advancing towards me. So movement, new troop movements are very slow. Advance, advance, advance. So this is a Finska Indelat Infantry unit. So they're all walking. Oh, they're hidden. This is a Liv Grenadier Regimente, my grenadiers. They look pretty sweet. This is my my skirmishers, but they can form. They can do. Oh, no, wait, I must have misclicked. Oh, Lat Infantry. Okay, proper felt Jaeger. Okay, these guys are my skirmishers. They don't can't do much. That's my militia that's advancing. Okay, so the f so the direction to do the direction to go, I think, is to, for this line to pull back. Uh, 
It's for my left to pull back while my right advances. That's the the winning goal, I think. You guys out of range? Well, apparently not. Or it is to advance, but give my guns a wide berth. Because these guys, these guns fire in quite a flat trajectory. Well, actually, first of all, this is all their militia. Militia, militia. Send. Send some of my dragoons to scout ahead up here. So I do want to advance my flank up like this, because this is where I've got all my delicious militia. I want to do something like this. What's their general? I mean, they are forming up in response. That's precisely what they're doing. They are forming up in response. In which case, then you guys might push. Yeah, I thought as much. You guys advance further up like that, and you guys. have to advance more into their face and rely on the militia advancing up like so let's get my cavalry moving about these units are partially struggling because they are walking while hidden and I might have to make them run which is terrible in this it's terrible to make units run <laughs> in Napoleon Tower War 3 that much I do know pull my cavalry back I think I need to make them run. So they get into position. The guns actually unlimber up so they can pivot. There's their guns at the rear. Bring our guns more into the town. I bet you guys are probably watching this thinking, God, what a baby. <laughs> well, hey, these guys go slow even when they're running. Is there not a... I'm sure I had this exact same thing. If there's a way to... No number... I have to dig into that. What about classic Total War camera? Yes! That's more like it. I'm so much more familiar with middle mouse clicking and then just dragging. Yes, perfect. Let's wait for our lines. Format. 
because they are hidden. But yeah, my guys, uh, they're active. They're not knackered from that. Brought my right flank into position. Well, actually, you guys are probably okay enough to advance. Cavalry. Then my guns. My 12 pounders can stay further away. Push up my cavalry. Oh my god, that's a block of men and a half. in the woods. So you men advance up the road into the woods at speed. It's going to be quite a watershed, watershed moment for me. Okay, the Dragoons have been routed. My cavalry are, are knackered. You're gonna get ambushed. Push my cavalry up the left flank. How are my guns doing? Unlimber. And the first shots have been fired from my Felt Jaeger company. These men advance, hopefully into contact with the enemy. My strength on the left is... My dominance on the left, frankly, is significant. But I want to wait till these units are pushed up into position. the use of their militia against my cavalry, although it looks like. The men are fatigued, sir. I, I must rest know away. they're knackered. Six pounders engage the centre of the line, twelve pounders engage that cluster of men. See, their men are fresh and mine are tired, so that's probably gonna let's get my morale wise. I need to get used to that. That's an artillery shot into my own men. So you men have to have to make a strategic dash up the flank. If I have to pull back my right, I will do so. I think I probably will have to. At speed, pull back my cavalry. See if I can see if I can make them run into an area where I can use my advantage in mounted units push my center focus my firepower on that flank again that's hit my own guys I know they're they're fatigued they'd have to pull back my main line my grenadiers can engage, hopefully. Advance up. That regiment of infantry is advanced as my send a unit of cavalry 
The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest up away. The right up the flank quite aggressively to threaten their general and their guns. But the centre of the line has been met. They're tiring out their own infantry now. Aha. Mounted infantry. Our cavalry will ride to an area of the battlefield, then dismount to fight as take out the general threaten their infantry with cavalry attack. You men advance. Okay, let's bring my cavalry in to hit the rear of that infantry unit that's charging my line. Run an infantry unit through the combat. Excellent. Great success. Push up our battle line. Bring my cavalry back because they're exhausted. Pivot that flank unit in. Their artillery is opening up. Let's give my cavalry advanced orders. The third regiment of militias going down. The center of my line looks quite vulnerable. might be opportune to send in a unit of dragoons to threaten one of their men on the flank. Our general was hit by one cannonball. You see how well they stand up to that from a morale perspective. Although it looks like they do stand up to cavalry charges quite well. So I'm relying on the 3rd Regiment being dismantled fairly quickly. That unit of Dragoons has been knocked back. So let's pull my Dragoons back on the flank, get my other cavalry up here. They don't have to run. They're all going to engage the 3rd Regiment. Their centre is experiencing a lot of concentrated musket fire. 3rd Regiment surely can't take too much action like this. The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. Oh, veteran line infantry. I am a dummy. That was a bad idea, wasn't it? Pull back my cavalry because they're getting attacked by sharpshooters. Pull my cavalry back because their, sh their elite infantry have been broken. Push up my flank. Get my general over to the centre. The 3rd Regiment. They're wavering, but they've not collapsed. If nothing else, it does sound brilliant. The right flank has collapsed. Pull my men back. See, how it says of what would be incredibly useful at the moment. These are my grenadiers, that's why they didn't go do so well. Get my dragoons in there to attack the sharpshooters. The third regiment's done very well to not. You're not even engaging anyone. You know, sharpshooters is holding on quite well as well. My cavalry gonna hit the sharpshooters, who are probably not gonna take that very well. Nope, they're broken. A 
then push on and attack the guns. So even more musketry against the sharpshooters. And into just the, back, the backs of the retreating men who run incredibly slowly. They're just running down, chasing down routing troops at this point. Go for the general. Who cares about people being rallied? Okay, they're starting to engage our cavalry, even though that's our fresh cavalry. Let's probably not push that too much. My cavalry are fatigued. Damn right, they're fatigued. They're fed up of winning. Finally, the 3rd Regiment is broken, so you men advance. You men advance. These two units work their way around the rear. Think the General's routed? Yeah, Mr. <laughs> that chap is done for. My militia are engaging the 2nd Regiment of Militia. Get some more massed musketry in against the 5th. This is my light infantry. Well, they're not. Well, they got more. A good amount more reloading skill and ammo. Than regular line. Get my cavalry out to safety. They're probably going to start to get picked away. Oh, you're actually were wavering for a second there. Now ah, you're being fired upon. So my entire cavalry arm, just get out of here. Run away from the enemy guns. These two units of infantry advancing to the rear. If your line is wavering, use your general's inspiration ability. It's not wavering. Oh, there it is, maybe. There, I'm happy. Yeah, it was a cavalry unit. Unsurprised. Go try and annihilate the remainder, the remaining staff of Mr. Payman. Payman? We killed him. Good stuff. This is a battle that will be won by infantry. You men. Actually, the cavalry have a pop at the militia. My infantry attempt to surround, or to continue, surrounding the enemy position. Get my cavalry back out to safety. They're exhausted. Yeah, they broke once more. Regiment of. I mean, it's, it's a remarkable how well some of these units are standing up. You men aren't even engaging. So let's fold in the corner of our line, see if that's got something to do with it. The fifth on the flank have given up. No, 
there we go. Push up, because now there's the 7th Regiment. Local partisans have stood, have returned to, to fight. Get my gunners to engage. So how's my grenadiers? They're not entirely engaging. I mean, look how many musket shots being fired at the 2nd Regiment of Militia. We're not even that far away. I wonder if I have to guard mode and... to get them to fully commit. Like a handful of them are. Half of them are, but these guys aren't interested. Is it because they count as being too... Field of regards quite narrow. They have to be more like that. It could well be. Seventh Regiment are exhausted. Let's advance through. Let's try and pierce their line. Okay, they've got more of them firing. That has to be it. It has to be like a, a 90 degree thing going on. Like you men have to be facing 90 degrees to engage the 8th Regiment, for example. you guys have pivoted you should yeah it's gotta be they must they must almost have an a completely straightforward firing arc my gun is actually doing anything i think the answer is no no Six pounders are. Not that they, not that they help us because they're just killing your own men. All right, let's just cease fire the artillery for now. Okay, these troops to the rear, they've been broken. Sar regiment chased down the Danish grenadier. Regiment are wavering. That line infantry unit is gone. Let's bring all my cavalry in, even though they are not in, a, in the best of positions. There we go. They'd only recently come back from routing, so they couldn't they weren't exactly gonna be top class troops. Yep, and both of those units have fallen, so now it's push on against the militia hiding at the rear. And these men cease fire and have a break. This is definitely the sort of um, game where you need reserves. And also let more of your men walk places. Not really something you have to worry about too much in Empire.
the Mass Sharpshooter Company shouldn't, asterisk, be very successful. I mean, in this case, lots of these uh, musket shots are going to be absorbed by routing militiamen. Look how many musket shots have been piled on them, piled onto the sharpshooter, and they've lost one man. Stand them in closer. Oh, there's a another unit of militia have come back to harass some of my cavalry. It's doing a bit more damage. Yeah, a bit more damage is all we need. And those guys. Yeah, they got chased away by my Dragoon unit. The 10th Regiment of Militia is holding. Hey men, make ready. 175 men. No kills yet. Still no kills. Two. So then just make all these men march up into position. Finally destroy the tenth regiment. Oh, they're wavering. They're finally wavering. Yeah, I really want hussar. I really want um, howitzers. There we go. Our infantry companies that flanked around. Now in position to pour fire onto the tent. I mean, look how many units they've got pouring fire onto one unit of militia. They've only lost less than 30 men in that entire engagement. There we go, they finally broke. Huzzah! First battle. And it's a victory for our forces. Hurrah! We lost 730 men, so we should replenish from that fairly quickly. We're going to peacefully occupy, even though looting is, temp is super tempting. So... I don't know what the hell that noise was. So they've got a college, which again is probably going to... I know what to do. Let's try and request peace and trade with Mecklenburg. Maybe it might take them a turn to get used to it. I don't want to be at war with them, but if we could trade with them now, we've got a trade... We have a um, land route. That would be very tempting. But now this army can replenish, and we've got troops able to head off any push from the north we would probably like to send one of my militia units to occupy the port here Schleswig which we are going to keep we're probably going to have to go for maybe top gallants maybe public schooling we should probably just go for classical economics it reduces happiness but Gets us plus three wealth, plus three percent wealth generated from all buildings. We're at seventeen hundred income per turn, and that should get better once we've once we bring Copenhagen into the fold. 
Or we might have to exempt them from tax just for the, mo the meantime, just to get them under control. But let's... I think that's everything we can do. Ooh, ooh, ah, oh, the Ottomans are not able to be traded with. It's awfully tempting, even though we hate, supposedly hate, Russia. To trade with them. Sorry for this noise, I don't know what. I go trade with Spain as well. If we go far away, it stops. So how much is that giving us? Okay, it's giving us the same amount per turn as taxing Copenhagen does. So that means we can afford to not tax it in for the time being. So let's hit end turn. I think that's the best way to do it. Even though, well, hopefully it tips the happiness characteristics in Russia away from us enough so that we can... Um, take Norway, and we can consolidate our territory in um, Scandinavia. Then we can explore if Russia is something we want to attack. Would be quite tempting. Is Pom promising that Mecklenburg didn't do anything? Oh, right, I forgot my trade ships. <laughs> I wonder if they've got enough. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh well. Easy come, easy go. Maybe I get some more visibility on what the Spanish are doing. Well, that's a fleet, a very grandiose term, I think, for what, we, what we've achieved. So Mecklenburg. Peace and trade. Okay, what about... Well, we're not going to give you jewellery, we're going to give you another set of china. I mean, I would like... I can't move this army out of Copenhagen, can I? No, not for an awfully long time. But I can move a militia regiment out to Alborg. Oh, that's the reason why I can trade with more people, because I've secured another trade port near my... near my, um... probably adjacent to my capital city. So, let's take... a portion of our army out of the city. No, that's enough. What if it's just... The, is it just the general? He definitely helps. It looks like, to be honest, they don't. You don't get replenishment outside of a town anyway, which I can see makes sense. So we have to keep them in Copenhagen for now. Should probably upgrade the farm to increase that replenishment rate. Good. It's concerning we've now got a front with front with Russia, not Russia, France. Okay, one more turn till we've got uh, national debt researched. My mistake. So we've got another one of our ships up on the uh, trade zone to the north. So there goes the French Empire. Don't do anything to us. We're relying on you, Royal Navy. Koningreich Prussian. Proven. <laughs> Yeah, we need to build up our economy quite significantly because the trouble is, is our main place to expand is Russia. But although, to be honest, the 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 the, um, the Swedish might play a bit of a waiting game, build up your strength until p uh, France pushes up to our front line, so we can push back and fight the French, take back territory, refuse to give it back, but then just make it ours. Could be an option. Could take Mecklenburg if they decide to prevaricate for long enough. Well, my army first needs to go destroy Denmark. 
Oh, thank God for a minute. I thought that was a, a warning we were bankrupt. Great, so we got national debt. So maybe logistics would be good. Reduced upkeep would also be good again. Reduce recruitment costs, tech research rates. Ooh, national census. That's pretty good. Be careful with the clamour for a form. Yeah, I don't think these guys replenish unless they're in a... It's just a building in general. Although it is winter, so that could be part of it. Let's upgrade this to a mercantile trading company as well. We do have a market that would be nice to upgrade, but it's very close to the frontier. Russia's raiding. That's fine. Maybe we start to filter out units that get fully replenished. You start to fold them across like that. Ah, you're fine. Should start to spend money on, on um, Finland, really, because it looks like... Well, I know what will happen. As soon as I start spending money in Finland, that's when Russia will come and get us. Although, what I could do... Although the Danes are up there. Hmm. Probably better off. Uh, maybe I should just hold off spending anything and maybe buy something bigger like Court of Appeals. Something more significant in my home territory. Hmm. Slower paced campaign, but it means you have to take... You can take longer to make your decisions. Ooh. No, because I don't want... What if I just... Don't join my war, and I don't join your war, and I sell you my technology. Good stuff. Because a strong Britain is in our interests, for now. Because Britain is going to be trying to... Well, we want Britain to use their navy to protect our ships conducting trade across the Atlantic. B.S. Soon, Russia, we will return. I don't like that one bit. So we could, with a ship, prevent them from crossing and taking Finland at all, but I don't think that's realistic. I don't think that's going to be something we'll be able to... Well, we could do. We could probably do it if I... A was good at Navy stuff. Oh, there we go. You, may, you hop into the college. Continue your research. Three and a half thousand. I think... Well, m minus two is usually okay. We get two grand from taxing you as well. That gets us 3,400 a turn, but let's exempt you from tax one more time. For one more turn. We can get the Grand Opera House. That'll really help. It's Copenhagen our... Uh, oh Sweden, you're actually shrinking. Tax burden is too much. Okay, let's do that. So at the very least, we want our regions to grow. Plus 31 a turn. Plus 48 a turn, but you're not being taxed. So when you get taxed, it'll go to, down to plus. Hey! We can now tax you because I've reduced the policies. So we will get 1,862 per turn from there. 3,100 in our coffers. So I think... Hmm. Draw scores will be good. Court of Appeals don't directly improve our happiness. But they give us the next step shot, next stage on research. Military Academy. 
more generals, increased recruitment capacity, increased or give us more access for more research potential. It's tempting to upgrade one school. Next turn, get it. Actually, how many turns does it take to build you? Eight. It takes you eight turns to build a great museum. I think the way to do it is to build the great museum first. Oh, it doesn't help. It's I thought it would get you extra happiness. Yeah, apparently not. Okay, let's build the university anyway. Because we know with that policy easement, they will be less angry with us. Uh, but looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for my Napoleon Total War 3 campaign as the Swedish Empire. Cheers everyone.